Are you wondering how you can create a stained glass effect in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius. I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years. And in this Envato Task Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create the stained glass effect using Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts and many more, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu. Set the width and the height to 880 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl and 0 to fit the artboard on your entire screen. Go to Window in the menu bar and first of all make sure that the control panel is active and then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, go to View and Show Grid to enable the grid. Go again to View, but this time select Snap to Grid, which will enable the Snap to Grid feature. And for the beginning, you'll need a grid line every 10 pixels. So let's go to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid. Just enter 10 pixels in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the changes. And let's start by selecting the rectangle tool from your toolbar. To create a new shape, you can either click and drag, or much easier, you can simply click on your artboard, set the width and the height to 850 pixels, and click OK to create this shape. Focus on the control panel for a few seconds. Make sure that the alignment is set to artboard, and then click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Now move to the Appearance panel to select the fill and remove the color. Select the stroke and increase the stroke weight to 20 points. And then click this button to open the Stroke Flyout panel and align the stroke to inside. Switch to the Selection tool and make sure that your shape remains selected. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Keep it selected and let's squeeze this copy. Hover your cursor over one of these corners, hold down Alt and Shift and simply click and drag from the outside to the inside to make your square 630 pixels wide. Once you're done, release the mouse button to squeeze this shape, move to the appearance panel and all you have to do is lower the stroke weight to 10 points. When you're done, reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar and this time use it to create a 120 pixel square. Click OK to create this shape. Click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the top left corner of the artboard. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to add a copy of this shape. Click these two buttons to move your copy in the top right corner of the artboard. And now hold down the shift key to select both of these tiny squares. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to add copies. And just click this button to move your copies in the bottom corners of the artboard. Continue with the ellipse tool from your toolbar. Again, you need to click on your artboard to create a 420 by 450 pixels shape. Click this button to center this shape on the horizontal axis and then use the selection tool to drag this shape in this exact location. Keep in mind that you can hold down the shift key as you click and drag to constrain the movement of your shape. Now click this shape to select it. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Hold down the shift key to select this copy along with this ellipse and move to the Pathfinder panel and click this intersect button. Continue with the ellipse tool. Click again on your artboard to create a 280 by 190 pixel shape. Click this button to center this shape on the horizontal axis. Use the selection tool to drag it in this exact location. And then switch to the anchor point tool and just click these two points to turn them into sharp points. Return to the rectangle tool and this time use it to create a 120 by 390 pixels shape. 
Press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Go to Effect, Warp and Bulge. Check this horizontal box and set the bend to minus 50%. Click OK to apply the effect and then go to Object and Expand Appearance. Let's click this button and this one to move this shape on the left edge of the artboard. And again, press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and increase the weight to 10 points. And don't forget to align your stroke to inside. Now press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on your selected shape. Go to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid and lower the grid to 5 pixels. Click OK to apply the changes and let's reselect the ellipse tool from the toolbar. Use it to create a 200 pixel circle. Move it in this exact location. Continue with the direct selection tool and hold down the shift key to select both of these points. Press the delete key to remove them. Return to the selection tool. Hold down the alt key and simply click and drag to add a copy. Drag it 100 pixels up and keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 100 pixels. Release the mouse button to create this copy. Let's rotate it like this. Continue with the line segment tool. Hold down the shift key and draw a 40 pixels horizontal path like this. When you're done, press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire artboard. You can go again to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid and increase the grid back to 10 pixels. And let's focus on the Layers panel to select some of these shapes. Make sure that your horizontal line is selected. Hold down the Shift key and click this target icon to quickly select all of these shapes. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add copies in the same place. Switch to the selection tool and let's rotate your copies like this. And then remember to hold down the shift key as you click and drag these copies to the right edge of the artboard like this. Now head back to the layers panel to select your copies along with the original shapes. Go to Object, Transform and Rotate. Set the angle to 90 degrees and just click this copy button to add more copies like this. Reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar and use it to create a 110 pixel square. Align this stroke to inside, center this shape and use the selection tool to rotate it like this. Now you need to select all of your shapes and go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Roughen. Check the absolute box and the smooth one. Lower the size to 1 pixel and keep the detail at 10. Click OK to apply the effect and then go to Object and Expand Appearance to expand it. And also go to Object, Path and Outline Stroke to turn your strokes into vector shapes. Now select just this shape and press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Continue with the direct selection tool and use it to select one of these outside anchor points. Press the delete key to remove this point and one more time to remove all of the outside anchor points. You'll end up with a new shape. Select it and replace the black with red. Reselect all of your shapes. Focus back on the Layers panel and hold down the Ctrl key to remove the red shape from your selection. Unite the remaining shapes using this button. Select the resulting compound path along with your red shape and click this minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. And this will be the shape which will serve as a frame for your stained glass effect. You can double click the name of this compound path and rename it Frame. Make sure that you still have it selected and replace the fill color with 27, 35 and 58 and then continue with the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Use it to create an 830 pixel square. Center this new shape using these same buttons. Fill it with yellow. Drag it below your frame. Select this frame and add a copy in front. Select this frame along with your yellow rectangle 
and click the minus rod button from the Pathfinder panel and press shift ctrl ng to ungroup all of these resulting shapes now switch to the selection tool and let's see how you can recolor all of these yellow shapes remember to hold down the shift key and start with the shapes from the corners add to your selection the middle one and replace this yellow with 218 166 and 46 continue with these four shapes and once you have them selected replace the yellow with 224 127 and 100 move to these four shapes and replace the field color with 134 134 and 201 select these four shapes and replace the yellow with 170 0 and again 0 continue with these shapes and replace the yellow with 144 26 and 33 now select these shapes and change the fill color to 194 152 and 108 continue with these four shapes and replace the color with 0 155 and 208 moving to these eight shapes you will need to change the fill color to 92 138 and 246 continue with these eight shapes and let's replace the fill color with 67 164 and 40 and finally for the remaining yellow shapes select them all and replace the fill color with 0 92 and 39 now that you've colored all of your shapes let's select them all hold down the control key and deselect your frame and go to effect stylize and inner glow change the blending mode to soft light lower the opacity to 50 percent increase the blur to 25 change the color to black click ok and ok to apply this effect and press ctrl ng to group all of these shapes let's lock this group to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident go to view and snap to grid to enable the snap to grid feature also go to edit preferences and general and make sure that your keyboard increment is set to one pixel and let's focus on this frame select it and go to object path and offset path set the offset to minus two pixels click ok to create this new compound path press ctrl c and then ctrl f to add a copy of this new compound path press the down arrow button twice which will move your selected compound path two pixels down now hold on the shift key to select both of these new compound paths and click this minus front button from the pathfinder panel with this new group of shapes selected let's go to object compound path and make which will turn your group into a new compound path keep it selected and focus on the appearance panel select this fill and replace the color with white don't forget to lower the opacity to 20 percent Reselect your frame and press Ctrl and F twice to add two copies in front. Make sure that just your top copy is selected and press the up arrow button twice, which will move your copy two pixels up. Now select both of these copies and click again this minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Go again to Object, Compact Path and Make to turn your new group of shapes into a new Compact Path. Keep it selected and change the fill color to black. Return to your frame, select it and make sure that the fill is selected and go to effect, stylize and drop shadow. Let's change the blending mode to normal, lower the opacity to 30%, set the offset values to 0 and 2 pixels, lower the blur to 1 pixel, replace this color with 27, 
35 and 58. Click OK and OK to apply this effect. Return to the appearance panel and add a second fill for your selected compact pad using this button. Keep this new fill selected and go again to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. For this first effect, you need to lower the opacity to 15%, set the vertical offset to minus 2 pixels, lower the blur to 0 pixels and replace this color with white. Click OK and OK. Reselect this top fill and go again to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. And for this second effect, you need to lower the opacity to 5%, Set the vertical offset to 10 pixels. Keep the blur at 0 pixels. Replace this color with 27, 35 and 58. Click OK and OK to apply the second drop shadow effect. Return to the appearance panel and add one more fill for your selected compound pad. Keep it selected and replace the color with black. Lower its opacity to 25% and change the blending mode to soft light. And then go to Effect, Artistic and Film Grain. Drag these sliders to 20, 0 and 10. Click OK to apply this effect. Return to the Appearance panel and drag this stroke below the fills. Select it and apply this brush from the Brushes panel. Increase the stroke weight to 4 points. And in order to get rid of this small glitch, let's apply a Round Corners effect. Go to Effect, Stylize and Round Corners, set the radius to only one pixel, click OK and as you can see that little glitch disappeared. Let's return to the Appearance panel to lower the opacity of the stroke to 25%, change the blending mode to Soft Light and let's add another stroke for this compound pad using this button. Drag it below your other stroke. Keep it selected and change the color to white. Align it to outside. Increase the stroke weight to 5 points. Lower the opacity to 15% and change the blending mode to soft light. And then reselect the rectangle tool to create a new shape. Just click on your artboard to create an 850 pixel square. Center it again using these two buttons. Select the stroke and remove the color. Select the fill and set the color to black. Lower the opacity to 50% and this time change the blending mode to overlay. And then go to Effect, Artistic and Sponge. Drag these sliders to 2, 12 and 5. Click OK to apply this first effect. Make sure that your fill is still selected and go to Effect, Artistic and Plastic Wrap. For this second effect, drag the sliders to 4, 14 and again 14. Click OK to apply the second effect and go again to Effect, this time Distort and Glass. Set the distortion to 5 and the smoothness to 3. Make sure that you have Frosted selected from this drop down menu. Keep the scaling set to 100% and click OK to apply this final effect. Add a second fill for this shape using this same button. Keep it selected and let's open the gradient panel. Click this button to apply a radial gradient for your selected fill. Change the blending mode to overlay. Select this gradient slider and lower the opacity to 0% and then use the gradient tool from your toolbar to make your gradient go from this point to this point. Now return to the appearance panel to select this fill and duplicate it using this button. Reselect the gradient tool and use it to adjust the applied gradient. Make it go from the center of the artboard to this point. Head back to the Appearance panel and let's add one more fill using this button. Keep this new fill selected and first of all replace the radial gradient with a flat color. Make it 27, 35 and 58. Lower the opacity of this final fill to 10% and change the blending mode to Multiply. And then go to Effect, Artistic and Film Grain.
drag the sliders tool 20, 0 and 10, click OK to apply this effect and with this final touch your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, remember to hit that like button as it has been know that I did a good job, subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.